Day 160. 2 Chronicles 32-33. After all these acts of faithfulness, Sennacherib king of Assyria came and invaded Judah. He laid siege to the fortified cities, intending to conquer them for himself. When Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come to make war against Jerusalem, he consulted with his leaders and commanders about stopping up the waters of the springs outside the city, and they helped him carry it out. Many people assembled and stopped up all the springs and the stream that flowed through the land. Why should the kings of Assyria come and find plenty of water? They said. Then Hezekiah worked resolutely to rebuild all the broken sections of the wall and to raise up towers on it. He also built an outer wall and reinforced the supporting terraces of the city of David, and he produced an abundance of weapons and shields. Hezekiah appointed military commanders over the people and gathered the people in the square of the city gate. Then he encouraged them, saying, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged before the king of Assyria and the vast army with him, for there is a greater one with us than with him. With him is only the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. So the people were strengthened by the words of Hezekiah king of Judah. Later, as Sennacherib king of Assyria and all his forces besieged Lachish, he sent his servants to Jerusalem with a message for king Hezekiah of Judah and all the people of Judah who were in Jerusalem, this is what Sennacherib king of Assyria says, what is the basis of your confidence? That you remain in Jerusalem under siege. Is not Hezekiah misleading you to give you over to death by famine and thirst when he says, The Lord our God will deliver us from the hand of the king of Assyria? Did not Hezekiah himself remove his high places and his altars and say to Judah and Jerusalem, You must worship before one altar, and on it you shall burn sacrifices? Do you not know what I and my fathers have done to all the peoples of the lands? Have the gods of these nations ever been able to deliver their land from my hand? Who among all the gods of these nations that my fathers devoted to destruction has been able to deliver his people from my hand? How then can your God deliver you from my hand? So now, do not let Hezekiah deceive you, and do not let him mislead you like this. Do not believe him, for no god of any nation or kingdom has been able to deliver his people from my hand or from the hand of my fathers. How much less will your God deliver you from my hand? And the servants of Sennacherib spoke further against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah. He also wrote letters mocking the Lord, the God of Israel, and saying against him, just as the gods of the nations did not deliver their people from my hand. So the God of Hezekiah will not deliver his people from my hand. Then the Assyrians called out loudly in Hebrew to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall, to frighten and terrify them in order to capture the city. They spoke against the God of Jerusalem as they had spoken against the gods of the peoples of the earth, the work of human hands. In response, King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah son of Amos cried out to heaven in prayer, and the Lord sent an angel who annihilated every mighty man of valor and every leader and commander in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he withdrew to his own land in disgrace. And when he entered the temple of his God, some of his own sons struck him down with the sword. So the Lord saved Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem from the hands of King Sennacherib of Assyria and all the others, and he gave them rest on every side. Many brought offerings to Jerusalem for the Lord and valuable gifts for Hezekiah king of Judah, and from then on he was exalted in the eyes of all nations. In those days Hezekiah became mortally ill. So he prayed to the Lord, who spoke to him and gave him a son. But because his heart was proud, Hezekiah did not repay the favor shown to him. Therefore wrath came upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem. Then Hezekiah humbled the pride of his heart, he and the people of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord did not come upon them during the days of Hezekiah. Hezekiah had very great riches and honor, and he made treasuries for his silver, gold, precious stones, spices, shields, and all kinds of valuable articles. He also made storehouses for the harvest of grain and new wine and oil, stalls for all kinds of livestock, and pens for the flocks. He made cities for himself, and he acquired herds of sheep and cattle in abundance, for God gave him very great wealth. It was Hezekiah who blocked the upper outlet of the spring of Gin and channeled it down to the west side of the city of David. And Hezekiah prospered in all that he did. And so when ambassadors of the rulers of Babylon were sent to him to inquire about the wonder that had happened in the land, God left him alone to test him, that he might know all that was in Hezekiah's heart. As for the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and his deeds of loving devotion, they are indeed written in the vision of the prophet Isaiah son of Amos in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And Hezekiah rested with his fathers and was buried in the upper tombs of David's descendants. All Judah and the people of Jerusalem paid him honor at his death. 
and his son Manasseh reigned in his place. Manasseh was twelve years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem fifty-five years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord by following the abominations of the nations that the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. For he rebuilt the high places that his father Hezekiah had torn down, and he raised up altars for the Baals and made Asherah poles. And he worshipped and served all the host of heaven. Manasseh also built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord had said, My name will remain in Jerusalem forever. In both courtyards of the house of the Lord, he built altars to all the host of heaven. He sacrificed his sons in the fire in the valley of Hinnom. He practiced sorcery, divination, and witchcraft, and consulted mediums and spiritists. He did great evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. Manasseh even took the carved image he had made and set it up in the house of God, of which God had said to David and his son Solomon, In this temple and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will establish my name forever. I will never again cause the feet of the Israelites to leave the land that I assigned to your fathers, if only they are careful to do all that I have commanded them through Moses, all the laws, statutes, and judgments. So Manasseh led the people of Judah and Jerusalem astray. So that they did greater evil than the nations that the Lord had destroyed before the Israelites. And the Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they did not listen. So the Lord brought against them the military commanders of the king of Assyria, who captured Manasseh, put a hook in his nose, bound him with bronze shackles, and took him to Babylon. And in his distress, Manasseh sought the favor of the Lord his God and earnestly humbled himself before the God of his fathers. And when he prayed to him, the Lord received his plea and heard his petition, so he brought him back to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord is God. After this, Manasseh rebuilt the outer wall of the city of David from west of Gin in the valley to the entrance of the fish gate, and he brought it around the hill of Offal and heightened it considerably. He also stationed military commanders in all the fortified cities of Judah. He removed the foreign gods and the idol from the house of the Lord, along with all the altars he had built on the Temple Mount and in Jerusalem, and he dumped them outside the city. Then he restored the altar of the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings and thank offerings on it, and he told Judah to serve the Lord, the God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people still sacrificed at the high places, but only to the Lord their God. As for the rest of the acts of Manasseh, along with his prayer to his God and the words of the seers who spoke to him in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, they are indeed written in the chronicles of the kings of Israel. His prayer and how God received his plea, as well as all his sin and unfaithfulness, and the sites where he built high places and set up Asherah poles and idols before he humbled himself, they are indeed written in the records of the seers. And Manasseh rested with his fathers and was buried at his palace. And his son Ammon reigned in his place. Ammon was twenty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem two years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, as his father Manasseh had done. Ammon served and sacrificed to all the idols that his father Manasseh had made, but he did not humble himself before the Lord as his father Manasseh had done, instead, Ammon increased his guilt. Then the servants of Ammon conspired against him and killed him in his palace. But the people of the land killed all those who had conspired against King Ammon, and they made his son Josiah king in his place. John 18 verses 19 to 40. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus answered. I always taught in the synagogues and at the temple, where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why are you asking me? Ask those who heard my message. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus had said this, one of the officers standing nearby slapped him in the face and said, Is this how you answer the high priest? Jesus replied, If I said something wrong, testify as to what was wrong. But if I spoke correctly, why did you strike me? Then Anna sent him, still bound, to Caiaphas the high priest. Simon Peter was still standing and warming himself. So they asked him, Aren't you also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Peter denied it once more, and immediately a rooster crowed. Then they let Jesus away from Caiaphas into the praetorium. By now it was early morning, and the Jews did not enter the praetorium, to avoid being defiled and unable to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and asked, What accusation are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. 
you take him and judge him by your own law, Pilate told them. We are not permitted to execute anyone, the Jews replied. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to indicate the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate went back into the praetorium, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Are you saying this on your own, Jesus asked, or did others tell you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world, if it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is not of this realm. Then you are a king. Pilate said. You say that I am a king, Jesus answered. For this reason I was born and have come into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? Pilate asked. And having said this, he went out again to the Jews and told them, I find no basis for a charge against him. But it is your custom that I release to you one prisoner at the Passover. So then, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Not this man, they shouted, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was an insurrectionist.